This episode is part of Lanfrica Talks. Lanfrica Talks provides a platform to showcase efforts in language technologies around the world. To learn more or attend our live sessions, see the description below. Good day, everyone, and welcome back again to another session of the Land Freaker Talks. I'm your host, Chris. And today we are very, very glad to have Ife with us, talking to us about a wonderful project. Ife is a PhD candidate in the Cognitive Systems Program at the Department of Linguistics, University of British Columbia. She's a member of the Deep Learning and Natural Language Processing Group, working under the supervision of Professor Abdul Magid. She is currently a UBC public scholar and an associate member of the African Languages Technology Initiative in Nigeria. For her PhD dissertation, Ife is developing deep learning technologies for African languages and is engaged in work to make computers usable in African languages. In her research, she advocates for Afrocentric NLP for African languages in order to ensure that the unique features of African languages which distinguish them from Indo-European languages are properly modeled in language technologies developed for African languages. This is a very fascinating work that is very, very close to the heart of Lanfrica and Lanfrica Talks. So we're very glad to have you here, Ife, and the stage is yours. Thank you so much for inviting me. And um, I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to present today. And um, today I will be talking about um, AfroLead, um, a neural language identification tool for African languages. And um, this work was co-authored with um, a colleague, Abdul Rahim, and my supervisor, Abdul Magid, and um, my colleague, Elsidis. Um, one of the key motivations um, for this work is to enable the creation of massive multilingual data sets. Um, this is because um, due to the increase of social media, which has contributed to greater access to multilingual data, automatic, um, automatic language identification is a very important first step in processing human language appropriately, particularly in being able to identify one language belongs to a certain group, particularly in a multilingual scenario. And, um, AfroLead is, is a crucial step for building Afrocentric NLP because most African languages are low resource languages and it's not very straightforward um, to collect data for um, many of these languages. And so this was one of, two, one of the main motivations for building um, AfroLead. Um, the key contributions from this work is that one, we develop AfroLead, which is um, a state-of-the-art publicly available language identification tool that supports 517 African languages and language varieties. Um, second, um, AfroLead outperforms all five publicly available language identification tools that cover any number of African languages. Um, three, um, we provide linguistically motivated error analysis. And finally, we evaluate AfroLead in the wild and in out of domain scenarios to show the robustness of AfroLead. Um, like I mentioned previously, AfroLead um, supports 517 African languages and language varieties. And the reason I, um, I mentioned them as languages and language varieties is because um, sometimes there's a blur between what should be a language or a dialect, um, particularly in Africa. And um, sometimes there's no clear agreement on that. I'm not sure why my slides are going 
are moving on their own. Can you hear me clearly, everyone? Yeah, can hear you very well. Okay, all right. Yeah, so um, on this map, um, I show um, the different languages that we support and the countries where these languages are spoken. And um, these languages are linguistically and typologically diverse. And um, they are also low resource. Most of them are low resource languages. And um, these 517 languages are also taken from 50 out of 54 African language um, countries. Um, in terms of linguistic diversity, um, these languages are spoken in different parts of Africa. And um, although some of them are dialects of the same language, some of them should be, um, some of them are actually not even classified as dialects um, where they are spoken, they're classified as languages. And um, some of them are also significantly diverse in, in that there's no mutual intelligibility um, among those languages. And um, on these bubbles, we have the different countries where the languages are represented and um, the number of languages that we have from each country determines the size of each bubble. In terms of typological diversity, um, we have different variations in word order. So um, linguistically, there are five, I mean, there's seven word orders in the world. Um, in all languages in the world, and we have five out of seven word orders. And um, this includes subject, verb, object, which we have examples like Zoza and Yoruba. We have subject, object, verb, where we have examples like Somali and Amharic. Um, we have verb, subject, object, which is, for example, moral. Um, we have verb, object, subject, which is Malagasy. And then we also have languages without a dominant um, order. Um, so we have examples like Siswati and Vasa. Um, apart from this, we also have five orthographic scripts. Um, we have Ethiopic um, scripts, we have Arabic scripts, we have Vice scripts, we have Coptic scripts, and of course we have Latin scripts. Um, in terms of genealogies, um, we have Niger Congo languages, Afroasiatic languages, we have Nilo Saharan languages, we have Austronesian, we have Creole, um, different types of Creoles, we have Indo European, we have um, Koi Kwadi, and um, different types of those as well. And this makes up 14 different genealogies. Um, in terms of low resourceness, um, according to Joshi et al., um, most African languages um, were classified um, as either left behind or scraping bys. And um, although they did not, um, they did not um, provide um, um, like um, a description for each of the African languages, but for the number that they show classifications for, um, 542 of them were considered to be left behind in that it's probably impossible to build resources for them. Um, um, 26 of them were mentioned to be scraping bias with no labeled data sets. Um, nine of them were um, considered to be hopefuls with few labeled data sets, researchers and language support communities. Um, another, just one single language in Africa um, is considered to be a rising star with a strong web presence and insufficient labeled data collection. Um, this actually shows that there's, there's need for a lot of um, data collection for many of these African languages, and which is one of um, the, the challenges that AfroLead tries to solve. Um, for data, um, we used uh, manually curated data, and the reason we did this is because um, for most of these languages, there is no language identification system that supports them, and um, we had to like manually look through different resources and um, find data for these languages. Um, second, um, we use a multi-domain um, data 
um, which is taken from religious documents, government documents, health, education, and news documents. Um, and then the data is also multi-script data. Um, I show this visualization on the screen to show um, the different languages, um, different scripts that we have, and um, also the ISO 3, um, which is what we use to represent most of these languages. Um, for data size, um, we collected several tons of data in the different languages, and then we randomly selected 5,000 um, train examples, 50 um, test examples, and um, um, I mean 50 dev examples and 100 test examples respectively in each of these languages. And um, we decided to use like a uniform size to ensure that we we do not have, we do not dominate certain languages in the model um, at the expense of others. And um, there were a few, maybe uh, um, about 10 different languages that did not have up to 5,000 um, tests, um, I mean, train examples. And um, we highlight that in the paper. Um, for pre-processing, we um, experimented with by peer encodings, word level encodings, and character level. And um, the reason we did this was because um, we just wanted to determine what type of preprocessing um, would be beneficial for the models um, that we try to build, um, particularly since we have a large number of languages um, in, 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 in a single model. Um, for the architecture, we use um, a transformer, which we trained from scratch, and um, we have 12 attention heads. Um, I mean, 12 um, attention layers, 12 heads. We have 768 hidden dimensions, and the, um, the rest of the architecture details is also in the paper. I'll encourage you to read up on that. Um, for the results, which is where I would like to um, focus um, more time on. Um, the by pair encoding models outperforms um, the other two models on, on dev and test. And um, on the screen to my left, the first table, um, I highlight the, the F1 score and accuracies for, for the by pair models. And there's a significant improvement up above the character level model and the word level model. Um, also, I showed the distribution of the dev on the different languages. Um, we have at least 212 languages, that is 41% of the languages that have a perfect score on the dev. And um, 197 languages have um, a 95% um, F1 and um, about 69 languages, which is 13.34 lang um, percent have um, between 90 and 95 in accuracy. So we were able to report quite um, a number of languages um, attaining and achieving high F1 scores. Um, although we also have some languages that have really poor um, F1 scores. Um, next, um, we compared the performance of AfroLead with an existing tool, um, Frank. I, I don't know if um, anybody's um, aware of Frank or have used Frank. Um, so Frank is another language identification model that is built on about 400 um, different languages of the world. And about 88 of those languages are African languages. So we compared the performance of AfroLead with Frank. And um, AfroLead had an average F1 of 93.21, while Frank had um, um, an average F1 of 72.85. and um, in three um, languages, um, Frank actually outperformed AfroLead, while um, Frank and AfroLead had um, similar 
F1s on five languages, which we highlight with blue ink, the languages for which um, Franca performs Afro leader highlighted in green, while um, the average F1 score is highlighted with red ink. And then next we compared um, the performance of our model Afro lead with um, other um, language identification models. And um, we, for CLD2, um, CLD2 performs Afro lead on one language. CLD3 um, uh, performs Afro lead on about three languages. While um, Afrolead and um, CLD3 have similar scores on one language, which is Malagasy. And um, Lang ID also uh, performed Afrolead on two languages, Lang Detect on two languages as well. So we have highlighted with red ink all the languages where Afrolead performs other models. And out of 16 languages, which we evaluated in this way, um, Afrolid are performed, sorry, um, Afrolid are performed these models on um, seven out of um, 16 languages. And then um, it's also important to mention that um, these different languages were also able to achieve perfect F1 on some um, some languages and we did, um, we tested, we used the test sets for all these um, experiments. Um, I, another thing that I would like to mention here is, um, is that we, we selected these languages based on, um, on, on, the, on, on the other model that has the highest number of languages. So, any language that is not represented in any of the language, um, in, in any of the LID models, we represent it with a dash. So whenever you see a dash, it means that language doesn't support um, this specific language we were testing on. Um, next, we, we did some um, linguistically motivated analysis of the performance of the model. So the first thing we wanted to investigate was to determine how the model performed on, um, on different scripts. Um, that is scripts which are different from Latin scripts. And we were able to report really high accuracies for other scripts apart from Latin. And one of, um, one of, the, um, one of the motivations or um, the intuition behind the performance of these models on scripts which are different from, um, from Latin scripts is the fact that the model is able to discriminate these scripts really easily, particularly because we have a model with multiple languages in it. So every new script is, um, is quickly learned by the model. And we would find that most of the languages in this um, in the scripts have accuracies above between 90 and 100. And we also found that the errors that this um, models, um, that the model made for each of these languages was in with languages that were either written in the same script or with languages that were spoken in the same geographical location. So for example, for Amharic, where you have about 98, um, 98 um, F1, um, we found that the errors were with other like Ethiopic languages. And um, the same thing can be said about, um, about Fufu D, um, where we found that the, the errors that the model were making was with other languages that were spoken in the country where um, this language was spoken, which also shows that probably there was some, um, some examples of words from those other languages that must have found their way into um, the training data for these um, examples. Um, next, we try to evaluate the performance on Creoles. And so Creoles are like 
would make its languages, and I'm trying to use that to just simplify what Creoles are. Um, Creoles really are languages that hear lexical items and grammatical structures with one or more um, different unrelated languages. And um, most Creoles came about as a trade language where multiple um, different languages met um, at the point of, um, of trade and um, a new language was formed. And so we also reported high accuracies um, for all the Creoles that we had in the model. And for the Creoles, we also found that um, the errors that this models that the model made was with other languages from which either the Creole borrowed some lexical items or, or they were from languages that are spoken in the same geographical location as Creoles. Um, so, for example, when we had um, errors with, um, for example, Nigerian pidgin, which had an eye accuracy of about 98, um, we found that the errors were either with languages like Yoruba or, or Igbo, which is um, spoken in, in, in Nigeria as well. And that was quite interesting to find um, that the same similar phenomena was happening with um, these other languages. Um, next, we tried to evaluate the um, languages that were spoken in close geographical pro proximity, and we selected South African languages. And um, the reason we did this was because we understand that there's a lot of um, shared vocabulary across the different um, some of the different South African languages. And in fact, some of those languages are quite intelligible, mutually intelligible um, across the speakers. And um, although we found, um, we, we reported a low score for Zulu, um, we, we had quite high scores for some of the other um, South African languages. And if you look at the Confucian metrics um, below, you'll find that um, the, the model, when, whenever the model made errors for Zulu, it selected Zugza or um, um, it selected Zugza and sometimes or even other, other languages which are not South African languages. And um, some of the um, some of what we find to be the challenge here is um, heavily code mixed data, which is very prevalent amongst South African speakers, particularly when using um, um, data that is taken from domains that are not like maybe taken from a formal setting. And um, we also find that um, that code mixing, um, particularly in, in a large in a model that supports a large um, number of languages could be quite a challenge. And that, that is one um, finding that we make from this um, analysis on South African languages. Um, another case study we, we did was to um, evaluate this model on um, out of domain scenarios. And um, we, we did this because we wanted to investigate whether our model was going to be robust in out of domain scenarios. And so what we did was to collect um, 700 tweets from Africa. So we just put out crawlers to um, get data from these different languages. And then we took a sample of 1 million tweets. And then um, from, from this sample, um, again, a couple of them were already labeled. Um, and then we took out the undefined tweets and um, from this sample and run um, and, and used Afrolead um, to, to label these undefined tweets. And then we manually annotated results for Yoruba, Igbo, Alsa, and Nigerian Pidgin. And the reason we selected these um, languages is because of the availability of um, annotators um, that we could get access to easily. And um, on this on this table on the screen, um, we show the, the kind of annotation that we did. So for each of the tweets, um, we asked the annotator to um, to to indicate whether um, the tweet was code mixed, um, 
and if it was not code mixed um, to to indicate whether it was code mixed or not code mixed and to indicate what language it was code mixed with. We also asked the annotators to determine whether this um, label was correct. And so they only needed to say, oh yes, it's correct. No, it's not correct. Or it's a mixed, um, it's, it's a code mixed um, example and the code mixed language. And in scenarios where the annotator is not aware of what language it was, they needed to also indicate whether it was um, an unknown language. So we have more details of this um, analysis in the paper as well. And then the the second um, Twitter case study was with um, Afrocenti Corpus. Um, so we took the Afrocenti Corpus for Amharic, Hausa, Igbo, Nigerian Pigeon, Swahili, and Yoruba. And then we um, we compared the performance of Afrolid with Frank. And um, in one um, of these examples, Frank outperforms Afrolid, which it outperformed Afrolid on Nigerian Pigeon, while um, Afrolid outperformed Frank on all other languages. And we assume that um, Frank outperforms Afrolid because um, Frank is also trained on English and other, um, and, and other Indo European languages. And I believe this would have um, impacted on the performance. Um, for this for, for this um, model. And um, finally, there we have an um, online demo where you can try out um, Afrolate. And I, I know quite a number of people have tried it out and sent us comments and really appreciate those comments. And um, I'm trying to work on a better version of the model. And so we have, um, 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 they um, like a, a link to to the GitHub, the online demo, as well as the Python library. And finally, I, I just wanted to talk about some of the comments that we have received. And one of them, which is quite um, interesting, is um, that Afrolead works well with longer text. And um, um, so I, I have a question, which I would um, I would probably want to start my um, like the question and answer part from. And um, so I put two examples on the screen here. Um, the first one is Bawuni, which is a Yoruba sentence that means, how are you? And that is, um, that is written in Yoruba as Bawuni. And then we have a similar um, example, which in, in in pronunciation sounds exactly the same way. It's also Bawuni, but it means there's no one um, in Alsa. Now, um, in in language generally, particularly when you have fewer texts, um, those words are plausible in multiple languages. Now, the question is, in these scenarios, would it be beneficial to build the model in such a way that it returns all possible languages where this very short text is taken from, or what do you presume will be beneficial um, in this scenario for a language identification model? Thank you very, very much, um, Ife. This has been a really, truly wonderful and truly impactful work. Truly, truly, a lot of the things we do in NLP starts with getting the data set and need you need to really identify the language. So this is really the foundation of NLP. And it's been a long time coming. We're like people have been saying we need language yeah. identification <laughs> for our languages. What yeah. are we gonna do? And we've all been talking, but finally, yeah, Ife has done it. Thank yeah. you so much to you and your research team. We're Truly, truly grateful for this work. And I remember you also have another amazing work, Serengeti, too, where you you build a very huge language model. You, you and your research team are always doing very big things. That's very impressive. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Ife, and thank you very thank much you. to the audience. It was really nice having you. Thank you so much for this thank wonderful so presentation. And everyone, see you next time for our next Lanfrica Talks. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.